Hey everybody, Denny here with Float Fish Adventure. So a couple weeks ago, I posted up a video talking about uh, catfish rattles, and the video was about the color and how much the color does or doesn't matter. Um, and somebody requested that I do something about how catfish hear. Why didn't I think of that? That's a terrific idea. So kudos to Steve from Adventure Outdoors. Uh, let's talk about how catfish hear. I think this is a, a great topic. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so if you've ever been to a swimming pool or stick your head under the water in a bathtub or been bobbing for apples or whatever, um, you know that when you put your head underwater, the sound quality totally changes, right? Um, a lot of the sounds that were loud suddenly disappear altogether. Um, some little tiny sounds get really noticeable and loud. Um, you don't really have any sort of directional, um, you can't tell what sound, what, what direction sounds are coming from. Um, everything sounds really, really close, right? So there's a couple reasons why sound sounds so different underwater. First is just the fact that the quality of sound in water is a little different um, because of the medium, right? Because of water. Sound travels in waves and it, 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 the air has certain quality characteristics in for those waves, right? It's um, you got, it's very, uh, uh, there's a lot of resonance in the sound, in, in sound waves in the air. Um, underwater, uh, there's not as much resonance, sound is flatter, um, but water carries sound much, much better. Sound travels much faster underwater. Sound can travel much farther underwater. It doesn't in all cases because there are a lot of things that can contribute to that, that can, you know, uh, diminish those sound waves underwater so that they don't travel. But versus air, water has the capacity to carry sound much, much further. And because water is more dense, uh, sound waves require more energy to get started in water, right? So that's why, that's why the sounds out in the air that you're hearing outside and you put your head under the water, those sounds all disappear because they hit the water, those sound waves in the air hit the water and then they bounce off. They don't have enough energy to convert into a sound wave in the water. They just bounce off and they stay sound waves in air bouncing in another direction now. That's also why uh, for the kayak people out there, if you've ever tried to mount your transducer inside your kayak to shoot through the hull, um, you can do that even if you have your transducer mounted in a bunch of you know silicone and that silicone is up against the plastic and then that plastic is in the water, the sound, because it's all dense, the sound, the sound waves have enough, they'll propagate all the way through, right? But as soon as you get some air in there, then it, it doesn't work, right? And that's because the sound waves convert to sound waves in the air, and then once they're sound waves in air, they don't have enough energy then to become sound waves in water again, so the, the signal won't go through the air back into the water. That's just, you know, part of the nature of sound waves in air versus water. The other reason sound sounds so much different for you and I underwater is because of the way our ears work, right? So if you paid attention, and remember from science class, your ear is divided into three parts, right? The outer ear, the inner ear, which are the three bones, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, and the inner ear, which is a really complex structure that does a lot of processing of the sound. But so, you know, they're designed to process sound waves in the air, right? So sound waves hit our body and they bounce off. So your ear, funnels those sound, some of those sound waves and runs them through your ear canal, which acts as an acoustic chamber, hits the eardrum, vibrates it, which, you know, transmit the, those vibrations into the, the middle ear, those, those bones, which sort of amplify the signal and hand the signal off to the inner ear, which does all the processing and, and turns it into sound that, that we know. Underwater, we don't have sound waves in air for our ears to work with. So it's basically doing the best it can with a signal that it's not intended to deal with, right? So in air, sound waves bounce off our body. We're mostly made of water, the human body is, and so underwater, 
sound waves moving through the water hit our body, they don't bounce off. They continue to go into our body because we're the same density as the water around us, right? So those sound waves, they move through your head and they hit your skull back behind your jaw and it vibrates, it picks up the sound waves and it vibrates and it's close enough to your inner ear that your inner ear picks those up and it does the best it can. So that's why you can't, that's why there's no direction because our, 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 our system isn't designed to figure out the direction and where they're coming from when it's just coming into our body like that. So that's why sound sounds so much different to us underwater. Now, fish, we all know fish have lateral lines and those lateral lines um, help them with vibrations and sort of low frequencies. And a lot of people think that's just how fish hear and that is not the case. Fish actually have an inner ear and they don't need an outer ear because they don't need to funnel sound waves from the air because the sound waves aren't gonna bounce off of them. The sound waves in the water travel through the fish and hit the inner ear. Now the inner ear doesn't have this, the acoustic properties of the, the, you know, the, the acoustic chamber that our ear does or the amplification properties of the middle ear. So when the sound waves hit the middle ear, the fish can process it, but because of the reduced quality of their hearing system, they have a much smaller range of hearing than we do. Now, here's where it gets good. Catfish and a few other species of fish, they have developed a small chain of bones that comes out from the vertebrae that touches their inner ear and reaches out and touches the swim bladder. This is a big deal. This effectively gives them a three-part ear very similar to ours, right? So they have the inner ear, they have the middle ear, which is the bone structure, just like we have, and then the swim bladder acts as an acoustic chamber so that the sounds can resonate and amplify the same way that they do in our ear canal. So they don't need the outer ear because the sound waves come all the way into their body, hits the membrane of the swim bladder, it resonates, and then that swim bladder acts like the eardrum and vibrates and touches those bones. Those bones amplify the signal. They bring it into the inner ear and it can process it. Because of this complex structure in catfish, catfish have a much larger range of sound that they can hear than most other fish. In fact, they have almost the same range of sound they can hear that humans can hear. Actually, they can hear lower end sounds than we can. They can't hear some of the high end sounds, but when we're talking about those high end sounds, we're talking about the sounds that when you go in and put the headphones on and you gotta click the button because you can barely hear that stinking sound, we're talking about those high frequencies. So the normal sounds that we hear all around us all the time, catfish have the same range of hearing that we do. So let's look at the numbers and compare all this and, and see how they, they, they shake out. Healthy human range of hearing is between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Okay, most fish, they can hear between 20 and 1000 Hertz. Catfish, uh, when you factor in their lateral line um, for low frequencies, they can hear between one and 13,000 Hertz. Okay, so they're really getting close to our hearing range. Now while we're at it, um, sonar, the lowest frequency that most sonar will ping at is 50 kilohertz which is 50,000 hertz. So the lowest frequency is still way, way, way above what fish can hear, right? So fish cannot hear the sonar ping from sonar. It's way outside their hearing range. However, to generate that sonar ping, the transducer sets off a, an, a, an electrical discharge. And if you've ever listened, you can hear that makes a little clicking sound, right? So fish can't hear the ping, the sonar ping, but they can hear that clicking sound just as well as you can, right? So that's sonar, whether fish can, can or can't hear the sonar, no to the sonar, but yes to the thing that generates the sonar ping, okay? Okay, so how does this all break down? Basically what it means is catfish, for all intents and purposes, they can hear just as well as you or I in a medium where sound travels better than it does for us. So essentially, they hear better underwater than we hear outside of water, right? 
Also important to remember though, that they're only hearing sounds, for the most part, that generate underwater. Sounds that are coming from outside the water, they're just gonna bounce off and they're not gonna turn into sound waves within the water, unless the source of the sound is making contact with the water in some way so that the sound can be generated underneath the water. So the main thing really, I think, uh, on top of all this to, to remember is like, like any animal, like us, you know, if you go to a restaurant, there's a lot of sounds and we can hear all sorts of sounds at a restaurant, but you don't pay attention to all of them. You know, you can pick out a sound, you can focus on it and you can pay attention to it and everything else becomes background noise. And, and you know, fish, I'm assuming the same way, you know, so the, the, how you get a fish to pay attention to one sound and not let that sound just be part of the background noise. That is probably a mystery that nature gets to keep for itself right now. But that's it, the general overview on how catfish hear. If you have anything you wanna add or any questions, um, post them down in the comments section. Otherwise, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. I hope you found this informative. Until next time, paddle up, let's go looking for a fight.